What's going on, brothers? Welcome back to one of your favorite business streams, self-development streams of the Hall of Game. Uh, kind of impromptu tonight. Um, you know, I've been kind of not streaming a whole lot lately, but I'm here with our uh, our great brother Gabe A, who is resident on the Hall of Game podcast staff. Without him, there would they would not exist. So. I want to uh, thank him for being here. And today we are taking a page out of Andre Hatchett's book because he is going to be a part of, um, I believe, some meetup. Is that right, Gabe? In some event. Yeah, I think it's a conference or an event that he was advertising on Inst on Instagram. It's, okay. Uh, like Brothers Building Wealth. So I think it's like a digital type of conference. And okay. hopefully he'll be in the building. He'll be able to elaborate on it. But that's pretty much the foundation. But a conversation today, I'm like, all right, yeah, let's try to get into it and see if okay. Andre could join maybe later. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me go ahead and WhatsApp him. Shout out to Andre. My bad for not uh, reach, reaching out to you earlier, but thank you again, Andre, for indirectly uh, getting this it started. Thank you, brother Cortez Tucker, for being here. Um, and today, brothers, we want to give a few wealth building tools and tips. And uh, we are here with a brother who's very successful. Um, I always ask you to, 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 for people that might want to like, well, what does he know? Go ahead and tell, <laughs> what Brother Goshen, go ahead and tell the brothers, you know, go ahead and run down the educational background on them. You know, go ahead and get yeah. your brag on real quick, but let, let them know Man. what's going on. This, <laughs> I don't want to pray. Go yeah. ahead and get them. Go get your brag on, brother. Well, I can just say my background and people can, and I can just leave it there for people to look at. So I okay. guess um, from the foundation, I guess education wise, ed educated as an electrical engineer in Michigan transition over more into the automotive field where I was working as a wire harness design engineer, but found there weren't a lot of training opportunities there. So mm -hmm. transition into nuclear kind of thrive, thrive there as a nuclear engineer for some time mm -hmm. and then transition into cybersecurity. So pretty much securing nuclear plants from cybersecurity attacks. And that was, it's been pretty nice lately. Yeah. And um, because of all the stuff that was happening overseas with the geopolitical issues that became a very viable type of type of business. Then I tra transitioned to an organization that actually made nuclear plants. So I was helping with the uh, individuals doing doing that and then um, worked in utilities and microgrid tech technology. So engineering, cybersecurity combination. And then now I work as a senior consultant for a cybersecurity consultant firm. But even kind of on the side, too, I've, I've not only have done that as it concerns mm -hmm. career wise, but I've actually started to invest in real estate. And mm -hmm. when I say started, this is probably since 2012, 2013 or mm -hmm. so. So I was probably like around 20, 23, 24. Um, so around that time, started getting into some um, residential real estate. Um, started with one one property. I was the property manager. It was crazy in Detroit where I was pretty much getting calls in the middle of the night and everything. So then I began to uh, outsource that particular work to a property manager. And since then, have uh, come up on my fourth residential property. And yeah, I've just been going going from there. So all before the age of 30, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, now I'm 38. A little bit about me, I ain't got <laughs> shit on Gabe. <laughs> no <Nah>, man, <laughs> Gabe ain't got nothing. No, Gabe, Gabe beat me in everything, but uh, bachelor's, uh, biology, almost done with professional school. But I'm trying to get on Gabe's level, so I don't know as much as he knows about this, but maybe I know a little something. So, guys, thank you for being here. Like the video. Oh, yeah, um, I'm in school now too. I for, I, for, I forgot about that. Just finished my first first semester of my master's, going right. to my second. So I got a four point oh nine, man. I've got a four oh. Oh, oh, so that's what you do, baby. That's what you do. That's nothing for Gabe. For sure, for sure. <laughs> you know, that's nothing for Gabe. So, yeah. um, you know, let me let me let me talk about this because, I, you know, when it comes to 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 brothers, uh, especially African African American men. The wealth, I mean, you know, when black men hear wealth, the, what do you think when black men hear wealth? What do you think most brothers think when they when they, yeah. when they hear the term wealth? What do you think? What do you think that means? I think a lot of times we think of wealth and we think of trying to. So when things so um, let me think of the best way to, to explain it. A lot of times what happens is that we hear people talking about wealth. And we think of somebody 
kind of hitting a lick and coming up on something quick, coming mm-hmm. up on some quick money or some quick cash mm-hmm. or somebody that's maybe involved in the entertainment or sports industry. We think of those individuals as wealthy or having a mm-hmm. lot of knowledge as it concerns wealth. Mm-hmm. Or we can even have a mindset of wealth in terms of like these kind of uh, I don't know if people are involved in this, but like that 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 new Forex stock trading thing or individuals that do like Herbalife. So kind of like these other like little side hustles that people might look into to say like, hey, yeah, I'm just building up my wealth and this is mm-hmm. I'm, I'm building up my business. Uh, so I think that those are the first things that black black folk might think of as it concerns wealth. What is wealth, though, in the real definition? I think wealth is, and and so this isn't like the dictionary definition, but I think it mm-hmm. wealth is um, your ability to not be dependent upon any other economic source other than mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much you, and also taking that and having that actually having generational. So it's something mm-hmm. that's not only for 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 you, but even for your generations. Like you can pretty much sustain generations beyond your yourself. That's mm-hmm. kind of how I think of wealth: being able to hold yourself down, hold your family mm-hmm. down, and hold mm-hmm. generations beyond you down. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Now let me um, let me ask you: when you because there there's people that want to get into like there's a brother right here. Um, brother Cam Gibson, he says, brothers are making moves. Trust me. I'll have a cash semi truck by 21. All right. Shout out to the brother. Um, and I think this is a very interesting uh, quote or statement because I don't know if he really read the title of the show, but I mean, I'll have a cash semi truck by 21. And I mean, obviously, you must be driving dr- trucks. You must be doing well. Sure. But you, you know, just because you make a lot of money, let's say, for example, you mm-hmm. you are a, a, a trucker or a doctor or a lawyer or stuff like that, you make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily wealthy, does it? Absolutely, no, no. Okay. So I, so I think that's that's interesting because these these conversations have been happening around certain other areas within like Black YouTube. I think uh, the the gentleman Kevin Samuels speaks of it, right? The Henry the high earner, not rich yet. Um, I think the Black Brain Trust had a show on Friday talking about that that too, as it concerns yeah. individuals who earn very high incomes, right. but their lifestyle isn't something that's moving them upward and forward mm-hmm. economically. Mm-hmm. So I don't think just because you earn a lot of money or have a very high salary, that mm-hmm. that means that you're wealthy. So yeah, to, mm-hmm. to answer that question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do the those people who are wealthy what are some of their habits that differ from the average person mm. like me what what that's I'm above yeah what, what are they a, doing that i'm not doing that's a good good question mm-hmm. but if you don't mind i'd like to answer it from somewhere that that like black black folk has some familiarity with because okay. at times we don't see a lot of wealthy people in our environment Okay, but I think what we do see is a whole bunch of broke folk, a whole bunch of broke people, oh, and I feel I'm one that. Let me, let me tell you, and I feel that you can learn a lot about wealth mm-hmm. building and, and wealth from broke people, right? It's like mm-hmm. learning what something is by learning what something actually is not. So I'm, okay, so I kind of want <laughs> right. to right. start it off by hitting with what wealth is not. And then pretty much if you know what wealth is not, yeah, you do the exact opposite. You do the exact opposite of what broke people do and you'll be closer to wealth building. So um, I think one thing that's really interesting is around, especially around this time, right? It's tax time, right? It is tax time. People are doing all types of things, doing things strange for change, doing all types of activity. And my question is, what do people typically do around tax time and when they get some money back? some income tax tax back like what do you think people what are spend, what do spend people, money absolutely they spend money on i think the number one thing probably is like used people will buy a used car like 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 nothing used cars flat screen televisions lotto tickets another thing for <laughs> millennial women a lot of millennial women are doing this they're 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 actually going down to miami going down to, to uh, uh puerto rico they're actually getting surgeries 
with this tax. This wow. With, yeah. Oh yeah. It's like a big thing now. So you know, people are taking. So a lot of times, what what we can do as a community, and this is you know what people who stay stay broke do. Anytime they get any money, they take it and just throw it right right back into the system. Right. They don't use it to build anything. They don't use it. To, to, to grow where they are currently economically. But what they do do is that they take it and just throw it right back there into the economy. And they're in the same situation that they were at before. So I think that that's probably the number one thing is that what wealthy people don't do is that they don't just take all of the savings and just throw it all back right into the economy. Yeah. So that's okay, the first, that's, that's first, a very, first very, very good uh good definition there uh, uh, with the parable mm -hmm. tony davis thank you for the 49 super chat what's up power strategies get good to see my brother man if, if you don't email me nigga uh let me i'm sorry i'm trying to <laughs> i'm making the show ghetto again let me um <laughs> let me yeah that's my boy man he supposed to be, supposed to be hollering at me mm. i want to talk about this a lot of brothers i mean obviously you, we have people like yourself that have earned a lot, mm -hmm. you know, you know, based off your um, higher education, you're an engineer, mm -hmm. so you always have earned above above the median. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to be listening to this. And before we get into the, the, the greater details, I'm a brother that's making maybe forty thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I'm not brother Goshen or Tony Davis that be just you know just 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 David Johnson. You know them niggas got a lot of money. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm trying to move up in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm not making a lot of money. I'm pretty much poor. Mm -hmm. Can I also come out of that and build wealth? Hmm. Is it, is it strategy only for me if I make a certain amount of money? Yeah, I think, I think so. So kind of, you mentioned that 40, 50 K range. I actually okay. got my first, uh, property. Um, when I was working at my job right out of college, I was I was making 54K and I was living at home with my mom at the time. OK, so I actually was at that range of uh, salary and was able to put some money down. But the thing about it is that it took me longer to expand my investment por portfolio mm -hmm. when I was making less. So I think that one thing, yes, to answer the question, I do believe brothers and individuals and specifically speaking from real estate. Yeah, you you can invest in real estate with um, not as a high of a salary, but it might take you long. Well, I'm sure it will take you longer in order to build that out and really start to have it grow over time. But I think that as you're in that growing phase, as you're kind of moving forward, you need to start looking at different um, different vehicles that would make you a higher earner, right? So you might be in one job at one one okay. one one point, and you might be like, "Well, I can't really, I can't really um, invest like I would want to in, invest with the salary that I'm at." Okay, I mean, start gaining skills, start developing capabilities that would make you a higher earner, so that you can really start to invest in your own thing. So I will okay. say. Say okay. That. Okay. No. 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 Let me stop there. That's a, that's a very, very, very. I, I I like the thinking there. So let, let's 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 listen to what Brother Gabe is saying. If you are a brother and you are not where you would like to be, then here's a, a strategy: is okay. Let me momentarily gain some skills. I might I might take a coding class. I might become a trucker for a while. I know that happened with um dr j shout out to him he's actually a phd in chemistry and then he actually became a trucker short term oh, wow. to get the cash yeah dr j yeah i actually mm -hmm. did a, a um thank you brother justin march and then he actually wanted to do something else but he went and became a trucker short term so that he could do that for uh, a few years so he could build up the ability to make more money in the short term to do what he wanted to do back long term so so let me mm -hmm. kind of go back over that. He had a long-term goal that he wanted to reach. He just couldn't reach that goal and what he was technically doing. So he switched careers to earn more money so he could continue that goal. So mm -hmm. although it was a little extra step, that's where he was trying to be, and that's where he ended up becoming. You understand know, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, so, yeah. So a lot of guys don't, you know, <laughs> you know, I guess like if you watch football, 
some guys want to get the big play. Yep. You know, and instead of, you know, getting your West Coast offense on, uh, you know, you cowboy haters <laughs> remember that back in the day. Um, you get you you get the 80 yards, maybe in some chunks. Maybe you get it a year, five year, ten right. year. So some 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 brothers might want to get into something a little different, a little bit, you know, uh that they can help them earn a little bit more money. Yeah. So that you can eventually get to where you need to go, even though it might be an additional step backwards for yeah. a short time period. But it's it'd be worth it in the long run, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's right there with that mentality or or what Andre Hatchett always says is that it's it's like the long game and that the grind to the top is really like a boring one. Right. You might think that, hey, and I think that that's that's part of the mentality, which keep a lot of us us broke at times. We okay. think that if we're not hitting a home run, if we're not you, mm-hmm. you, you know doing the Hail Mary play or if we're not going straight straight for the three from the from half court, then we mm-hmm. really not doing nothing. But mm-hmm. really, yeah, you can get your mid, mid range on. You go for a couple of layups before mm-hmm. you go for those type of shots, right. you know, to kind of get you comfortable, kind of get you into the mood, into the grind of really mm-hmm. starting to make a difference. So, yeah, I think that even if you're not where you think you are right now, fi- financially or investment wise, start looking at opportunities for you to be able to earn earn more so that you can start to invest more and more and more. So, yeah, okay. look at where you are and look at where you want to go. Take steps to where you're trying to go. OK, so so guys, again, look look for look at where you are, look where you're trying to go and then take those actionable steps to where you'd like to be. All right. I always do that. Shout out to Sam Cassell, real content, bro. Big pug dog. We ain't got to thank you, brother. Tony Davis, Justin March. Uh, thank you so much. Is that? Uh, Uncle Manny goes get a skill that is in high demand and is in real truth. But up, I saw brother mm-hmm. out of South it's Carolina. True. I know damn near all you niggas where y'all from. But let me do this. So I want to. Uh, this is a sister right here mm-hmm. that has a son. Uh, shout out to Nick who grad and she asked a question a little bit earlier. She has a son that's eighteen years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and our, I don't know if he's a high school senior, but what are the stuff? If you're an, if you're uh, talking to an eighteen year old young man. And he's listening to this podcast Mm -hmm. and he wants to go on the steps of which we're going to go into more in detail or, or, you Mm -hmm. know, of of, of building wealth. What's some of the first things that he would want to do? I think that this is the first thing that I would talk about this. I would probably start from my own own experience. Right. When I was about to go when when I was in high school and I was about to graduate around that 18 year old time. it was always just advertised to us that you go to school, you get a mm-hmm. degree and you're good type of thing. And I think yeah. that that's such a, a negative wealth building men- mentality because that's mm-hmm. not the end. That's not the beginning or the end of the story. So yeah. that's that actually goes directly into the second point is that a lot of times you hear that going to school and just and just just go to school and you will, and you will be all right. And a lot of times you ask the question of these kids because I got nephews and cousins and everything. I ask them like, so what you going to school for and what do you want to do with that after you graduate? Right. Mm-hmm. And and way too often I hear, I don't know, I'm going to get that degree and I'm going to see what happened from there. And I'm like, ah, that's not good. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because just getting a degree is not going to set you up financially or not mm-hmm. going to put you in a wealth building type of situation necessarily the mm-hmm. brother um lanel young you had him on your channel before uh he he he, he talks about the debt matrix and yeah. kind of debt and everything and one one thing about um one thing about am i uh am i pausing oh shit, can you still hear me uh uh-uh. hey can you guys still still hear me Hmm. Hello? Hey, yeah, can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. The white male's holding me back. Go ahead, brother. What were you saying? Oh, yeah, it's all good. Okay, no, nah, I was saying that um the brother y- Lionel Young, you actually had him on your channel before. You talked about the debt, the debt matrix yeah. and kind of what so one thing that school does a lot of times, especially like it builds up debt, right? A lot of times you aren't just paying this 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars. In for an undergraduate degree out of your pocket, mm-hmm. you're typically building up debt. And the thing that's mm-hmm. really important to do is that you have to start to evaluate, okay, I'm going into school. School is mm-hmm. going to cost about this much. So I'm going to have this mm-hmm. much debt when I come out of school. Is mm-hmm. the field or the degree that I'm going into, 
is that going to be able to pay off this this loan mm-hmm. or am I going to have this loan for the rest of my life? Right. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. and that's 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 one thing that's really important. That'll be part of that discussion I had with that young young man. Like, brother, what are you interested in? What do you want to go into? What school do you want to go into? Do you know how much that will cost? And and, and kind of take it from there. So I guess the second point primarily goes into don't just go to school just to go to school. Go to school for something that would help you build a wealth type of found foundation in your life after school. You don't just want to go to school and come out with a bill. Cause that's what a lot of times brothers do, right? We like, oh, I'm getting this degree. I'm just I'm just, I'm just gonna get it. So now I'm smart. I'm now I'm an educated brother because I got a degree. No, mm-hmm. no, no. That's <laughs> that's that's that is not a good mentality because you pretty much are going to school for a bill if that particular degree doesn't give you a salary or give you some type of economic advantage. So that that's the second point. And that's probably around the area where I would have a conversation with that young man. Man, let me let me say this as a, as a guy that's in a lot of school debt now because of this professional program. Um, I don't know if this, this magazine still exists. I don't even know if they even sell these anymore because of the Internet. But um, number one, like I remember when I was coming up, um, community colleges were like looked down upon. Like most people, if, if you went to like a state in, in California, you went to community college or state college. I don't know what it was. It was like you have like kind of failed, right? Because because community colleges and state colleges, in many cases, are at least in California are commuter schools. You know, like your Sac State, mm-hmm. your Fresno States. I mean, this you know. Some schools like San Diego State is not really a commuter school, but a commuter school is pretty much a school that's inside of the, it's a university, but people drive there and drive home and they typically live there. People yep. don't move there to go to school there. With that being said, looking back, hindsight is 2020. If I wanted to do something and I wanted to go to college, I would get as much stuff as I could get, get done at the community college level. Yep. Um, Number one is cheaper. We had like a fee waiver for California uh, at mm-hmm. the time. So that means that the, the, the credits were free. Yeah. You could transfer up to like 70 units to the university. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, the class sizes were relatively small. The times were flexible. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, now you have your online lear- learning. That was just getting started then. I, don't, I think probably it's more prevalent now. Oh, it's a and lot then, of online learning programs. Yeah. Yep. And then let's go back to U.S. News, um, Best World and Reports. This is the best magazine for undergraduate and graduate schools. It tells you the price. It tells you mm-hmm. um, the most budget universities. People break this down. You can actually go look at it on uh, on, on on online. So mm-hmm. um, if you are a person that's like, you know, like let's say your dream was to go to like, you know, Harvard or Howard University I mean, those universities are great. I mean, you know, Harvard, I mean, obviously that's an Ivy League school, but you know, like, you know, Har- Howard University, I'm not shitting on black college or anything like that. But the, the, uh, the to be honest though, um, mm-hmm. you're going to pay a lot of debt to go to some of these private schools like Morehouse or yes. Spelman or Hampton. I, I mean, you, you're going to be paying, George, you know, you know, I, Boston, Georgetown. Yeah. Uh, first degree, I would always say in-state. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can, in-state. People laugh at you. That's okay. In state, yeah. In state, you're gonna get the best deals. And I, I, I really, I, I ended up finishing in state, but I, I should have stayed in state for the whole time. Mm-hmm. I would have did the community college more, and I would have went in state more, and I would have graduated with almost no debt instead mm-hmm. of being like, oh, you know, like some of my friends, they went to Hampton, they say all four years, and they graduated in sociology, and oh, by the way, they're still broke. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Versus the guy that went to like you know the California Community College system, that guy went to Sacramento State, but mm-hmm. that guy went to you know a, somewhere that was locally. He was able to drive, come home. Yep. He was he was able to work. He was able to stay with mom or stay with something like that. And then when you go to graduate school, if you need to do that, all right, now I got my first degree behind me with no debt. Yep. And if I'm gonna take a debt, I'm gonna you know take it for a professional program. I, I'm mm-hmm. a, a MBA. That's let's just start right there. Yeah. Um, NBA programs 
you know, your your you know your Georgia Techs, your mm-hmm. um, you know, your your Carnegie Mellons, your Ivy Leagues, USC, University mm-hmm. of Michigan. If you're gonna get a uh, um uh um go in debt like medical school, dental school, law school, okay, yeah. you can take it's a, a, a return on those more so such so much more of a return on investment with, with those. yeah you know yep. so then you get to put you can roll the dice on yourself because you can make the money back especially yep. if you go to a, a really good MBA program University of Michigan you know if you get you yep. luckily get at Stanford you're in the, mm-hmm. you know you get an MBA in accounting UC Davis yeah you I mean you could take the sixty seventy thousand because you're gonna get picked up by a big company anyway right and U.S. News breaks that down yeah. And the job retention, the, the you know, if you go to the school, you pay this money, you get hired. Ninety eight percent of the people get hired. OK, cool. Yeah. So I can I can roll the dice on this. And, you know, I might work for Dole Bananas for like five years. I have a buddy that went to mm-hmm. Harvard. He graduated with um, Howard University of Mathematics. Then he went to uh, he worked for Bank of America, North Carolina. Then he went mm-hmm. from there and then he went to Harvard B School. And then he went to, he was living in Mexico. He had a really, really good job making like 200 grand a year. Yeah. And that was a part of the deal that we're going to pay your, you know, tuition or whatever like that. So that was a good, that was a good deal. So strategic is, is what you need to do. And U.S. News gives that kind of reports. Go ahead, brother. I was, I was just about to say that being very strategic with that, with, with those educational goals, right? Not just going to school to go to school, but going to school strategically so even for that young young man like one thing that you were speaking about which i think was amazing as -hmm. it concerns community college i took several community college courses um during the summer for my undergrad at a local community college in detroit that transferred up to my university right Mm -hmm. so i'm spending way less money on you know chemistry or calc one or something or physics right these are just prerequisite class. These these aren't the classes that the university specializes in, but these are classes that are at a much less price that will transfer those particular credits into your university. So the, mm-hmm. I think that that would be amazing, even for high school students to start taking some of those prerequisite classes. I, I know the young young lady mentioned that her son was really good at math. Hey, have him t- have him take a pre calc class right during the summer, even before he, he goes into uh, yeah. his his particular program less price and he'll be able to test out of that at his university which overall makes his total cost coming out of college less so you're coming out of college with less debt if you're paying less for those community college classes that will eventually go to your graduation because i did that a lot and so you i came finish, out of, you finish earlier too yes and you finish early i came out of my uh, undergraduate program with a little over twenty thousand dollars in student loans now it's pretty much zero now it's because because I invested in those uh, programs that pay uh, for my education. So I was I did a couple of different things. I did an internship with the Department of Defense, which they pay for all of my tuition as I was interning with them for like uh, my last two, two, two years of college and also taking those community college classes that helped out a lot. So 20K with a university that was pretty much about 20K a year. <laughs> You know, I really came out on on top financially there. So, like you said, being strategic with those educational goals and not just going to school just just to go to school. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and shout out to brother Craig for the super chat. Uh, let me read his. Uh, he says, uh, "Oh shit." Brother Craig says, peace to you, little bro. On behalf of Tipsy Tulis Patriots, all this is a dope <laughs> stream. Salute, Gabe, salute. It's bro, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hug something up for my big bro. He, he, he's, uh, he's a really good brother. He's crazy though. Uh, <laughs> he's a real, real good brother though. Yeah. Kenny Condra, salute, O'Shea and Gabe. I'm busy, but wanted to drop by and show support for the two success driven brothers. Peace, everyone. Oh, yeah, um, too, guys, l- like the video. Okay, let's, let me, let me, cause you, brother, but Dr. Andown, and you, I know you got some money, nigga. You need to come up here and tell us how you get some of that money. <laughs> uh, he acts a real die. He's like an emergency uh, MD. So, oh, no, that nigga got some money. Mm-hmm. Um, so, brother, let me ask you this. What are some, I mean, cause you, you preparing the, uh, the, the show for the day. Yeah. Um, what are some steps mm-hmm. that, if brothers want to look at this big picture, because you know wealth is like it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a marathon. Yeah. What are some of the things that you know black men should be looking looking forward to? That's that's like a perfect lead into the next next point. 
is that I think that brothers should really keep their eyes on emerging markets and tech, tech technologies, right? I think that everyone is at least aware of that, of like the fourth industrial revolution. I think everybody keeps keeps talking about it. They, they, they talk about it a lot on the Black Brain Trust, all types of four articles, all types of um, um, publications, US news, fourth industrial technologies are coming and it's gonna take over so many jobs and the industry is changing. And I think that so so some of those tech technologies involve like artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, Internet of Things, cloud computing, 5G technology. I wouldn't say that you have to be an expert in every single one of these, but I would say in order to kind of keep yourself above the market, you need to have some type of understanding or at least be somewhat familiar with these particular tech technologies. And not only that. Look at different opportunities for you to get involved, right? Because mm -hmm. you might not necessarily be a tech a technologist, somebody who's going to you know program some type of five G tech technologies for some devices, but you could be a project manager for those type of projects, right? You could look into getting some project management uh, certification and then kind of getting into some type of firm that manages those particular technology individuals. So that can be an insertion point for you getting into that of the fourth industrial technology business. So that's one thing, right? You mm -hmm. One is that being familiar with emerging technologies and markets and kind of with the markets. Another one, I think we've talked about this bef before as it concerns elderly care. I don't, I, like elderly folk are pretty much getting older mm -hmm. and they are not dying as fast as they used to and a lot of, and they need a lot of help with their daily living. Right. So there's several um, business opportunities. Um, they have um, like elderly assisted living housing that you can invest in. If you're investing in like 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 real estate, they have you can pretty much buy a piece of real estate and that you can have an elderly assisted living housing there. And you can receive whatever money from the government that they give in order to take care of their daily needs or even home health care systems. Right where you can employ individuals to go out to individuals' homes, elderly individuals' homes, to be able to service them. So these are some things that are emerging, right? For industrial technology, the baby boomers are getting older and they need help. Um, we can see that these things are on the rise because even like, like DoorDash and Postmates, you know, these are food delivery services. But you can even see like larger corporations and organizations like CVS and Walmart, they're taking part in delivering groceries, literally from the grocery store to your grocery, like like right there to your home, right? Mm -hmm. And that all goes hand in hand in this emerging elderly care thing and even just emerging technologies that you can literally get medicine delivered to the home and put right, right there in the hands of individuals. So kind of just keeping your eyes on things that are happening in the market from a technological or even just 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 a human type of perspective. So human services are always going to be there. So, yeah. OK. Human services. All right. OK. All right. What will be yeah, the, like the, doctors? The like, yeah. Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope I mean, that they, 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 these machines are getting smart. So <laughs> what, what will be the and, and shout out to brother uh, McDowell about my first rental. And it was actually lowered my studio loan debt. It's a marathon, not a race, fellas. Thank you, brother. Nope. And then we have said Dr. B. Oh, wait, Doc. Purposely positive people perpetuating power economics. Salute, brother. Mm -hmm. Old panel chat. Okay. Now you know only he can say something so exquisite. Try saying that fast. What's up, brother Doc? I see you out there, <laughs> man. If you say that, you might uh, 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 you know too quick now. <laughs> you had to watch yourself. Shout out to uh, Book of Alpharonomy YouTube oh. channel. It's a great brother. Go check him out. I think he's. From, I think. I think be away from Alabama or somewhere down 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 south. All right. Uh, what's the What's the next one, brother? So this is the last one that I have. And I think that this one really hit home with me, especially growing up in mm -hmm. Detroit, kind of like, a, you know, like a hood type of environment. And I think that this one is doing more doing rather than talking. Uh Oh, right? I mean, you know, just kind of growing up like around black black men and in our community, Lord, you know, we congregate in those staple places, right? The barbershops, you know, the basketball courts, you know, even at church, right? You got the long church service. People, I mean, the pastor just talking, 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 right? The whole time. And I think we are, we, we are literally fixated with talking and discussing things. We'll talk for hours. And I, I mean, even you see on black YouTube, man, people, 
dudes will talk and talk and talk about a subject to that thing. I mean, to they blue in the face. The same stuff. George right? Megan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it is that it's nothing wrong with talking or discussing, you know, interesting topics. Right. But there needs to come a time where that talking turns into action. Right. You know, I mean, it just needs to start to turn into action. And I, and, and it's just hard for me because I can't stand that I'm about to do this or that type type, brother. George like, Megan. I, like, I'm not mm. trying to, I don't really care about what you're trying to do. Mm hmm. I mean, if you're not doing it, like, do uh -oh. so. I mean, I can go on and on and on about it, but I just think over overall mm -hmm. that those those goals, right? If you're trying to build wealth, you you can, you have to be a bigger doer than you are a bigger talker, mm -hmm. because it won't amount to anything but words. So <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of Negroes are like that. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, just add my, my. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm gonna just go back to the drawing board and add two points on what I think. Because, um, I mean, I'm still a broke ass nigga, right? And but I do know some wealthy people, and all wealthy people that I know have interned with somebody. Hmm. Cut to the chase. Said this. Same thing about what you just said. Niggas be talking about the same stuff. But don't follow <laughs> through. Um, yeah. You know, in okay, I, I, you know, I'm in the YouTube business, and you know, I'm a person that's very. If, if, if brothers know about me, you know, think about me. I'm a very opportunistic person, and um, I try to see things that people don't necessarily see. So I'm very if I see an opportunity, I go real, real, real hard to be in a certain market or try to differentiate myself or to try to, you know, even in the social media business, which is competitive, even in even in this space. Um, but there are times where I don't know everything. So I, I will attach myself to a YouTube who is much more successful than me that knows the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll learn and I'll, I'll talk about my internship that I've had with. Phil Scott of the African diaspora. I consider him a really good friend of mine. Um, and my YouTube channel, Ken Gonda. Uh, when I first, look, so I'll just tell you guys how, how I pitched it. Thank you, brother, for the support. I'm going to just, you know, give you guys a, 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 a live example. When I first ha started Ken Gonda, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted it to be for a content strategy, but I didn't know how to really get it to where I'm going to go in this market. Kellen Cash, which is the, um, manager of Phil, I, I had a relationship with him. So I asked him, I said, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. I want to work with you guys. I know you guys are trying to get into Africa. I'm always there. Um, we can produce content for you. Mm -hmm. I don't want you guys to do anything for me, uh, but I, I do want to learn how this sort of stuff, I want to step up my content in other forms that I'm not, I've never been able to do. That's been the deal. And I've been working with them uh, for a year. Uh, everybody that I know have a, 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 a guy that's worth $10 million, he's done the same thing. Every rich person that doesn't know something has interned. Puff Daddy was interning. Mm -hmm. You know, this is one of the things, and a lot of times interning is you don't get paid. Yeah. You know, I'm mean, going to talk about this. Uh, but what you do gain is the, the knowledge. For example, John Paul DeZoria, uh, he was working with Red Ken Hair Products. He owns uh, John Paul Mitchell. He owns uh, Patron. Mm -hmm. He's he's a, he's a guy that had started two billion dollar companies, mm -hmm. which is which is unique. This was a guy that interned a lot of his life in certain situations where he knew the formula to make the money. He even when he started his company he had like five hundred bucks, but it didn't really matter. That he had five hundred bucks. The fact that he 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 knew the business and he knew what to do. Yeah. Um. And then let me start, I'll talk about net, interning, and then I'm going to talk about network. To be able to network with people, along with knowing what you know, and then and then and then being able to exchange what you have to gain more stuff is an asset. For example. Let's talk about the African Diaspora Channel. I had something that they had something. Phil had something that I needed. He had something that 
he didn't necessarily need it, but it's a it's an avenue that he wanted. It was a trade off. I was bringing something to the table, and he was bringing something to the table, and we're able to we're able to trade what we have to make each other better. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I have he has I have access to my network. Like he came over, he interviewed George, he interviewed uh, Nyla, he interviewed you know I, I people over here, and then vice versa. I was able to, you know, pull on resources that he may have had. Um, and mm-hmm. even when I need to do a show, I have, for example, Brother Gabe. Yeah, He's helped me stretch out my content in other ways that I could not do it myself. Cut to the chase. You guys see the people all the time. Obsidian. The network that I have, it, it allows me to make money. Yeah. And, and it, 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 it allows me to, Brother Linnell, there's another brother. Uh, it allows me to make money, I would say, easier. Because now I can I can hit up a brother, let's say if I want to do a collaboration, I, I do a collaboration with Book of Alphronomy. He can come over here and get some subscribers or vice versa. It's a deal. It's an exchange. He's bringing something to the table. I'm bringing something to the table. Uh, Taylor made dreams. I was just on his show. I do mm-hmm. I do favors to people and they do favors to me back, which helps us both grow. Absolutely. And I've got one, one comment on that, too, mm-hmm. is that I think a lot of times brothers, even on YouTube and even in real, real world, brothers, brothers be beefy. Brothers got issues with one another, yeah. be arguing yeah. and tripping on each other. But I think that the point, and I think that this comes from a lot of what, what you just said, is that even though you can't work work with everybody, right. there are people you can work work with. Right. Don't get jaded by those individuals that you got issues with that are black black brothers. Black black men can work together. Yes. You just got to find the ones that you can work work with and move forward like that. Rather than focusing on the ones that you can't work work with. Yes. Yes. Let me let me um let me add to this also. Um I was watching a video the other day uh of an old general electric CEO. Hmm. And um he's talking about developing talent. That's the last thing I want to talk about. Uh you know, when when it comes to black men. None of us really believe in really the interning. None of us really believe in the network, especially with African-American men. We don't mm-hmm. really believe in that. And then we refuse, thirdly, to recognize people's talent. Now, mm-hmm. let's look at Brother Gate, for example. He's, he's very, very bright. He's, he's highly articulate. I mean, he's probably blessing and all that stuff. But, I mean, you, you hear him, you know, he's consistent. Every time he comes here, uh, the brother is just on another level, all right? Uh, when I first got a chance to know who he was, he actually emailed me. I said, no, this guy's smart. <laughs> yeah. I know that he is talented. Let me let me make a sports analogy. We, when we look at, um, you know, a lot of teams that go to the college playoff, look at Joe Burrow. You guys, anybody watch that game that LSU had against Clemson? We could use both teams, whoever you want to pick. What, what do LSU and Clemson have in, in common? LSU is a very talented football team, all right. And Joe Burrow is a he's a, you know, he's a he's a really good quarterback. But would you deny he has all of this talent around him in key positions? The talented receivers. He has a head coach and or, or Orgeron that went out and got Joe Brady, that was the offensive assistant for the New Orleans Saints to come and be the passing game coordinator. So he has all of these people that can contribute to what makes a winning successful formula. If any, if any of you guys look at even my platform, right? I have the, the Nickathon shows. I got the <laughs> Paul of game shows. I got Dima. Who's a very talented editor. I got, you know, so it, it allows me to do some things. I'm only a small, a small time YouTuber. But one of the things I realized is I try to associate myself with a lot of talented people. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when I look at black men, there's talent all around a lot of brothers, but for whatever reason, a lot of black men don't want to see. They want to be recognized as a talent, but they don't want to recognize that other people have talent. Mm-hmm. Being I around talented that. people with the same goal is is very fruitful. I can, I mean, I, a lot of brothers don't really understand those soft skills that can that help can help brothers build wealth. Um, a lot of times, being personable, Gabe. You know, we yeah. talk about all the time brothers going into because you're a person that you want to speak at these conferences. Yep. Um, got a couple you know, this year, man. So you know, I'm 
pretty happy about that. But yeah, yeah, you got all those. I mean, you get, you got a lot of brothers that got that Antonio Brown talent, but they got mm-hmm. that Antonio Brown personality, and it doesn't matter if your talent is so good if you can't hone it. Yes. Um, a, a lot of brothers gotta really focus on those soft skills and be personable so that you can make an opportunity for yourself. And I'm gonna talk about Gabe. Mm-hmm. Gabe is a person, Dr. Kenya Meadows is like that too. Dr. Kenya mm-hmm. Meadows is a very opportunity. He's gonna keep asking, he's gonna keep pushing the issue for him to come on. Lonnie, Lionel Lung Young is the same way. There are, these people are very aggressive about getting more exposure for what they're trying to do. And people yeah. like that are hard to, to beat. And they do it because they're personable. They do it because they're 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 you know they're they're, they're uh they 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 they, they want to be a part of the network. And um, and and people like that get very far in life. Let me tell you what I learned that from Oshay. Just 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 really quickly, I yeah, learned that from another brother, from a brother that was probably 15, 20 years older than me. Mm-hmm. There were times because I grew up, I was in a single mother house household. She was raising me. She didn't have that aggression, that stick to itness type of thing. Right. And when I got connected to this brother, I just noticed he did not give up ever ever give like this was another black brother from detroit and i watched him closely watched him closely and i started to apply that to my life so that keep going and punching 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 into that thing so i bust bust through that wall that's where i got it from i got it from somebody from my own community sorry to cut you off (laughs) yeah no 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 no. and 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 this is um you know something that I'm, i'm you know basically we know there's a lot of stuff we could put out there, but one of the things that make people that, you know, outside of wealthy and making good investments is the ability to meet different people that can introduce them into stuff that they mm-hmm. typically would not know, but they can do it because they can position themselves to being at the right place at the right time with the right attitude. Um, People that go to conferences, you know, Andre Hatchett is like that. He's always trying to be in the right place. If you notice, Andre Hatchett is very methodical, even on social media, mm-hmm. you know, comes in on the streams. He collabs with people. He collabs with people that you might not think he should be collabing with people like myself. He collabs with people that he should be collabing with people like Boyce Watkins. And he always mm-hmm. creates opportunities for himself. Kenyon Meadows is like that. Lionel is like that. Gabe's like that. They're always at the right place at the right time. Um, and it's the same thing with Erica Williams. She's the same way. She's everywhere, all the time. She's personable. Doesn't matter if you're black, white, or whatever. She's always at the right place at the right time. And because of that, and she's personable, and people like her, she can gain more wealth. She can gain more resources. She can gain more events. She can gain the insight to life. She can gain more insider knowledge. All because mm-hmm. people like her. A lot of times with black men, uh, you know, we, we, we kinda, yeah. you know, it's kind of like this. When I was at Howard, there was a Dr. Jesse Nicholson. He was the head of the, P, uh, the chemistry department. We had another doctor that was a uh, Dr. Tom Hambright, which he was actually more, you know, we would we would see the inorganic chemist. We would say he was a genius, but he couldn't. He was never the head of the chemistry department because obviously he just didn't have the people skills. I think what we need to talk about when we talk about talent, network, intern. You got to be around talented people a lot of times. You need a good network mm-hmm. and, and and you need to know, I'll, like, for example, real estate. I don't know anything about real estate. Mm-hmm. I want a real estate invest, but if I want to learn about real estate, I'm going to go and I'm going to spend money with a mentor that teaches this the best way I can get it. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. A lot of black men got to start to understand this is what successful people do. So just, to, you know, like, like I said, also, brothers. Recognize when people are talented and be able to tell them that they have talent. You want to be around talented people. This is why all the people, you know, like, you know, people want to play with LeBron James. Do you know why they want to play with LeBron James? Mm-hmm. They're going to fucking win a lot of games playing with LeBron James, right? Yep. People wanted, wanted to go to the Golden State Warriors. Why? Golden State wins games. Mm-hmm. Um, surround yourself with talented people. It really, 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 really makes your life much easier. Mm-hmm. You know, collaborate with people that are, that are sometimes a lot of times better than you. Bigger platforms, uh, no more than you. It's not a problem because the more talent you have around you, the more things that you can get into. Be around talented people. It always works that way.
I, I can tell you're going to go far. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, because a lot of times that that might even include you moving from where you currently are physically. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of times if you are in the same place that you grew up, you typically a lot of times stay with the same people you grew up with. There might not mm -hmm. be that many opportunities in the place that you grew up. So we can at times like mentally kind of kind of jail you into a lot of times the only people that you see are the people around around you who haven't really moved any further than you or any further than where they've previously been. So sometimes that surrounding yourself with uh, talented and wealthy people, you might have to move to a new place, make new associations. And, you know, even the Internet has has capabilities for you to and networking opportunities for you to get with with people who are beyond you in years like even I know a lot of times what I do, I use LinkedIn a lot. Right. I'm in the cybersecurity field, kind of professional services and consulting. And one thing that I do from time to time, is I'll just go on LinkedIn and I'll find individuals who probably have more experience than me, who are with larger organizations, who have a greater skill set than me. And I'll just connect with them on LinkedIn. I'll send them a little message and say, hey, I noticed that you that we're both in the same field and wanted to connect with you on here. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. are some interesting projects that you're currently walking? like you're currently working on and are there any opportunities for us to collaborate type of thing so that that has gained me more connections and more notoriety in my field so that when i do apply to these conferences these individuals are like oh yeah i know who that is oh yeah like i'm i'm reviewing his abstract oh yeah 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 he should come and speak here now they're familiar with who i am and that mm -hmm. goes right back to your networking thing building up a network through mm -hmm. sometimes those all types of mediums, kind of opportunistic mediums like email, like LinkedIn, like YouTube, mm -hmm. like even a phone phone call at times. So, you know, using all of those in order to grow your network and grow your circle of individuals that you can always reach out to who are even beyond you in years and beyond you in wealth. Let me, let me, I mean, I, I agree. Shout out to brother Alex Steele. Cut to the chase. The video I dropped just got 100K in two days. O'Shea was the first person to tell me I had talent to let me on this panel. Oh, yeah, no. man, you got talent. You're a talented young brother, man. You know, you eat a lot of booty, but we um, <laughs> still, still praying for you with that. And um, thank you, Street Genius. Let's talk soon. Keep it going. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you for the super chat. Brother, my brother Moses, uh, Flaw 2001. If there's enough time, discuss black men, people gaining ownership control of what we create, political, economical, protections, and empowerment. Let me talk about that. Mm -hmm. Um, just real quick. You know, in the black male spaces, which we're 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 pretty much new with this. I think, like, you know, when the manosphere came out in 2015, I was one of the first guys to kind of spearhead this lane for like, you know, let's say for brothers to come out. And just say a black male development type of show, a black mm -hmm. male podcast. I was one of the first guys, I was probably the first guy to steer it in the direction of business ownership finance. Mm -hmm. And you 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 know what? Um it's a slow build. I will say that. Yep. Um because I remember when we first started shows like this, it was like 30 or 40 or 50 people. Yep. I mean, Gabe will tell you. Um, and sometimes we get as much as three or 400 or whatever. Yeah. But what I will say is this, as far as empower me, empowerment, um, a black man with stuff like this, here's what we got to start to do. A lot of brothers are not used to black people or black men creating content specifically directed at them in a mm -hmm. positive fashion. Uh, when you're used to, let's say, you know, most black male content is like, you know, big booty models, <laughs> roasting <laughs> sports, yeah. dunk contest. That's, you know, but these kind of stuff, this kind of stuff is something that's new and um, and, and it's, you, you know, it, it hasn't mm -hmm. developed yet. Here's what we're already doing. We're starting off slow and we're creating opportunities and lanes for the guys in the, the tech industries. Keep it techie, brothers like mm -hmm. uh, yourself, Maurice November, people like that. So we, we, got, we have to cre keep creating spaces for our brothers who are talented and are bright to excel. This yeah. this the, the this space is for smart niggas. I'll tell you that right now. OK, smart niggas run this over here. OK, <laughs> I don't care if you've been to jail. I don't care if you've been educated, whatever. Smart niggas run this. Right. Brother Linnell. Linnell was here 
initially before people start talking about the kind of Bitcoin real hard. So he's seen the, the progression of where we're at now. Oh, yeah. We got to keep supporting the brothers that come with this sort of content because we we, we need more intelligent brothers to develop these areas. Because, mm-hmm. you know, number one, I mean, I think I'm, uh, you know, uh, uh, smart in, in many ways, but I don't know what Linnell may know. And I don't know what Gabe may know. So slowly but surely, as we can do that, we can we can uh, empower black men and cater things specifically for them, because we I believe that black men would, would, would be more receptive if we created the let's say then, you know, white man or the white manosphere. My brother engineering Canada, I've, I've worked with him before. So we yeah. continue to do that. Now, once we can do those things slowly but surely, we could talk about political things and get brothers together. And it, it is happening. It's happening. Mm-hmm. But it's it's at a, it's a slow build and it works. Mm-hmm. So I think what brothers need to do is we need to, we need to give brothers time and then we need to invite more brothers in to develop platforms that yeah. that you know that uh, what, what do you think about that, brother Gabe? I think that that's that's very true. I think one thing that at times it can be lacking is a lot of times you can see the way that people are digesting information today. One is like through a lot of social media platforms. A lot of times people don't get their news from anywhere, but on social media, right? YouTube, but typically like an Instagram, Twitter, uh, and these particular plat- platforms. I think that at times the the marketing or one thing that I see is that a lot there's a lot of brothers that are only YouTube or are only on one type of platform. Yes. So that when that so in order to greater proliferate that information and that content, it needs to kind of spread out to those mm-hmm. other popular plat platforms right. and draw everything back into. And I think that with that type of strategy, you're able to touch a, a, a larger audience. I think even um, what's this lady's name? She used to be on your platform. Uh, Nicole Michelle. She yeah. Used to be like the late. So she started off on face on Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. Initially. And then she was able to pull a lot of those listeners from Facebook all the way over to YouTube. And now she's mm-hmm. kind of doing a lot of different things there. Yeah. Even with like Kev- Kevin Samuels, he right. kind of came on your platform. Then he went and got his own YouTube channel and kind of right. grew grew yeah. that. And now he's doing these meetups and face-to-face things. Yeah. So they're kind of have been leveraging multiple ways of interacting with their viewership. And I think that that's something that will really help to grow like that black male audience. It's kind of mm-hmm. increasing the tentacles, like an octopus of social media content. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of brothers. Are in, and now, you know, uh, shout out to Fantastic Peas in the building. Uh, a lot of, you know, now and in, in, the, in the social media age, uh, people are trying to compete with YouTube. So that means basically yep. even Facebook, if you have over 10,000 likes, they're allowing you to monetize. Mm. You can make money there. Um, so a lot of big social media companies are making it making it an incentive to reach people. Let's say, for example, what's the uh, podcast? Um, anchor. anchor, anchor has really good rates. Yep. Um, people anchor. like there's people who make tons of money on Anchor, Apple um, Podcasts, of course, as a podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's all of these different uh, avenues that brothers can uh, can can go in, and I'm gonna tell you like this, guys. You know me personally. I am I am beat. I will tell you, brothers, man, I, I've, I've put in a, a lot of work with, for you, Negroes. Yeah. And I've tried to open the door, nigga. But I will tell you, this is probably for for, for, for sure my last year. I'm letting <laughs> well, you, so you know, because I'm it. already getting I'm already getting tired as it is. So I'm I'm tired. You don't of y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah so you, 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 you niggas going to come up with it. I'm running out of gas. Uh, <laughs> uh, Uncle O'Shea, nigga, I'm I was supposed to quit last year. But I can pretty much tell you, nigga, I'm ready to go this year. Now, this is I'm ready to leave this alone. That's why I haven't been posting as much as I typically would, nigga. I'm tired of y'all. I'm just gonna be real. So we need some of you niggas to come up and 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 and, and take this to another level, and and take the message to all the platforms because, um, seriously, this this is growing. This is growing, and um, brothers are are are, are we're, I'm really starting to see. The biggest boom are the tech guys and the finance guys. Mm-hmm. We're seeing the most growth with the Linnells, the Black Brain Trust, the Keep It Techies, the Gabe A's, the Engineering mm-hmm. Cannabises, uh, the Dr. Kenyon Meadows, the Andre Hatchets, mm-hmm. um, the Maurice Novembers. Uh, 
you, you, it, it, and before this was a, a group, I would say that watched us but couldn't participate because the content wasn't there for them. They, they would watch the roast shit. Yeah. But now you can come in and you can see actively that these guys. Look, you, now you got married guys. You know, you have so many guys that Shout can participate guys. now. Shout out to the married guys. <laughs> yeah, because the content is so vast. Uh, yeah. And it gives our brothers a, 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 a chance to interact with guys who are single, guys who whatever. It's fun. It gets something to look forward to. There's the pro show. You got the pro blacks, George Macon and the whole tips. Mm -hmm. So um, the, 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 the thought process is broad. And what we need are brothers to come in. Whatever you are, you I don't care if you're the Pookie and Ray Ray, whatever. I will say this. Even some of the quote unquote Pookie and Ray Ray brothers, if you go look at some of the brothers with the prison content, they are killing it right now on YouTube, mm -hmm. killing it on Instagram. You know, they sell a merch. They haven't, you know, it's there. It's so, so there's a lot of spaces for brothers to come together and learn yeah. um, all of these skill sets that you can do. So again, this is a space that anybody can come in and you guys can develop it. You know, if you guys mm -hmm. need help or if I can put you on the platform, um, don't, I mean, no actual interviews this month, but nigga, I will eventually <laughs> uh, get you on. But um, again, we 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 want to to bring precedence to um people who have money and people who don't have money. The difference is that person knows something a lot of times mm -hmm. that you don't know. And um, having friends yeah. who are successful in your field and meeting people. I, I allows you to know a lot of stuff that you don't know. And I think and, connecting these 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 two things right with black male media and kind of the emergence and the growing and the transformation of it, com making that a wealth vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. Where individuals can jump can jump in and kind of do some similar things that you're doing here on mm -hmm. YouTube. And I think that 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 can also be be something cuz you know as people invested in certain things, invested mm -hmm. in certain technologies or kind of put their time and energy and they're digesting a lot of that information it became bigger right mm -hmm. as 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 things as we invest things in it as viewers invest in it it becomes mm -hmm. bigger and it can be something that can be a greater wealth generator so you know i think that that kind of even goes back to that comment about controlling your own like black males control this particular space right so kind of like i know you guys were speaking of bef before it being something like a uh, conference that might be coming up I don't know. I don't know what the plans are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna hook it up. That it's can gonna be, be a hook. wealth wealth generator right there. Like you have it to is. pay to come to a conference, and that right. can be something that can grow. And then there can be addition, like maybe an annual, and go mm -hmm. into a, a biannual, and can kind of grow in that fashion. So you know, as you brothers are investing more and more into this particular plat platform, and we're creating more and more content, I think mm -hmm. that wealth building um, opportunities are growing along with it. To kind of connect it, it, it is. I want to say this because, um, in in one aspect, like even with the you know Ken Gonda situation and with the African content, um, the manosphere has allowed me to get into that, which full circle will help mm -hmm. me try to you know get brothers opportunities in other parts of the world because of that exchange. Um, so like I said, the opportunities are endless. You know, yeah. the, the black male content arena when we first came in, it was it was nothing, but I can tell you right now, it was a it's a multi-million dollar generator. I mean, I I remember when Alpha Male Strategies and guys like that oh, yeah. uh had yeah, no nothing. subscribers and then the, you know they got you know, you know, Stefan and brothers doing real good. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of brothers have catapulted a lot of careers just from YouTube that you know brothers are making a lot of money. So I thank you guys again. Shout out to Brother David Johnson. It's time we put all the bullshit aside and start networking together on more every level with whatever talent you have. Manuscript for life. Let me ask you, Gabe, are we promoting uh -huh. your channel today? Uh, I need to... Between you school plan. and work and everything. Let, let's I, just go ahead. What, what, what's, the, what's the channel plan? Man, let me let me find it. Let me get, this, <laughs> get it real quick. One second. So this is the particular channel um, and to kind of kind of give a little back, a bit of background with it. Uh, so, again, like I mentioned, it is um, I work in as a consultant in cybersecurity pretty much. Right. So I kind of speak of the particular flavor of cybersecurity that that I'm into um, mm -hmm. and different opportunities and ways for individuals to get into it. 
Um, so I'm specifically into industrial control systems, uh, type of cybersecurity. So cybersecurity for oil and gas plants, automotive, nuclear, uh, mm-hmm. electrical utility. So kind of one little example is where um, the recent Iranian type of activity. So this geopolitical stuff is so as a result of that, a lot of there was a lot of scare as it concerns some retaliatory um, cyber attacks coming from Iran because they have some of that capability. So my organization has been very integral in dealing with a lot of that type of information that's happening. And I think that uh, I think it's really interesting and it's very lucrative at the time. So um, my my first two podcasts, it gets into my my background and it gets into some certifications in the second one. So I need to add more content for mm-hmm. you brothers to get a better understanding of it. But that's kind of the mm-hmm. foundation of that particular channel that O'Shea put out there. Let's do this. Um, I want to get him up to 200 subscribers because he, you know, oh, he man. don't, you know, we would, I, I, we did the same thing for Kenyon Meadows the other night and uh, Kenyon had like 640 something and then we ended up getting him over 1100 so he's monetized. But, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to talk about this, brothers. Can we get Brother Gabe uh, so a few, uh, get at least 150 subscribers because we want to make sure that now that we have subscribers and they're hitting the bell on his channel, uh, he got to produce some content at yeah. least once or twice a month or something like that. So yep. let's give our brother a reason to produce content. Like I said, I believe that this particular content is very niche, but uh, mm-hmm. it's very good because cybersecurity is, is, is paying, right? So we want to give oh, guys just the opportunity. Um, let's say, for example, if you're thinking about a career change, I was talking to Brother George, and, and he's mm-hmm. there. He's a good friend of mine. And George made a um, George made a very, very interesting point. He says, you know, a lot of times you have brothers who are a little older, mm-hmm. but they are maybe afraid to change a career because, you know, I, you know, gave me, he's 30. I might be 35, 40, just getting started. Well, I don't know if I, you know, can go into that because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 and 42. And I was telling him, I said, listen, man, that's, you know, that's nonsense. You know, I know how a lot of guys may think, but, you know, it, but, you know, go ahead and go for it. What do you think about that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that there are a lot of like foundational skill sets of individuals right. that can jump over into cybersecurity. And, you know, I would say that there is a lot of value or a lot of, I guess, personal value that I find in this career field. Like, imagine like, like if if something goes a bump in the night, right? Mm-hmm. From a cybersecurity perspective, if somebody organization gets hacked, they're 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 calling you in order to come out and address that particular issue. So you know you're really helping to save lives. You're really helping to to secure individuals and organizations, and you're getting paid pretty hefty in order to do that. You know, like and and I work with like local governments. I work with mm-hmm. state state governments and kind of deal with a lot of these particular things and speaking at conferences and things about some of my particular work. So, you know, pretty much helping to secure um, large organizations and pretty much the future is, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. I like it. I like it. And um, I just encourage a lot of brothers if they have an interest. Yeah, man, like jump on the podcast, the, from the link that uh, O'Shea provided and I can give you more and more information. Okay, now I, I, we saw fifty nine subscribers. Why it's not showing the subscribers? Maybe are they showing on your end game? No, they're not showing at all. I'm not sure. I'm seeing a lot of brothers putting subscribe, hit the bell. Same. Are y'all subscribing? Hit the bell. Hold on. Let me check, <laughs> let me check here. I'm gonna subscribe and hit the bell. Let me see what it say. From mind. Let me see what I get. Now. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not changing at all. I'm not sure what the. That's YouTube tripping because I know thing? I just subscribed to my okay. other channel and it's not hitting the bell. All right. Uh, um, Roger Marine. I'm 57. I mm-hmm. just got my BS in cybersecurity. Dope, dope. Right That's now, brother Roger, are you? Are you? Are, 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 thank you, Evans and Kenny. So, guys, you know, never too old, yeah. to do something new. So I know we had to do a show on that, like the non-traditional, yes, students and stuff like that. Um, it says I couldn't hit the bell. It said content was made for kids. Maybe you haven't changed that on your channel. You know, YouTube is real, real. It said the content is for kids. Oh, for you need kids? to change your YouTube thing. What that so so under settings I have to change it to yeah 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 you, you gotta because they got that new that new law or whatever oh it's a new you know the subscriber change hasn't changed in the longest so yeah so you probably they probably got it where you can yeah so Is you should like kept a, the other one because you're trying to get away from niggas and then, then, then now now man that's that's why 
I'll have to change this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the bell is messed up, but look, yeah, they hit it already. Yeah, his channel okay. will limit the notifications. I think it's the settings. Yeah, you got to go ahead and get, get your settings. But once you get your settings up, don't worry about it. Just Absolutely. tell me, and when I go on my own, I, I get I'll nigga thine it up. We'll get it back right because you know, <laughs> nigga thine gonna be you know, nigga thine. You might get a thousand okay. subs on one day, so okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll take this. Make sure you change your settings and make it sure that this channel is not for kids because that's what's happening. Like, we all had to do that with our channels, uh, yeah, because they had that little copa thing situation. So, yeah, um, brother James, shout out to uh, brother uh, Roastmaster for the PayPal. Thank you, brother. Uh, ODJ, keep rocking these business shows. They're my fave next to the curvy news. And you cussing these N words out. Well, that's a lot about to happen. So let me just say this, guys. <laughs> we do have, um, I I got, I know y'all been fiending for me to do a Negro show. So I gotta, I gotta do it. Um, and it's called Why Black Men Should Just Walk Away. All right. That's gonna be right now on the O'Shea Vlogcast channel. I was just about so to everybody ask leave <laughs> here. It is a nigga thon going on tonight. Mm hmm. It looks like a nigga thon is going on tonight. So if you go over to nigga thon, which is O'Shea's vlogcast, we will be getting it cracking. And we have Obsidian Media Network, who, who will be talking a lot of shit as usual. <laughs> All right. So we will be talking about that. Y'all know I, I love the fuckery and I can't get away from it, but I do love these shows. I actually prefer these more. Mm -hmm. Than that, because I feel like you can, you know, you could apply this. The, the other stuff is kind of more entertainment, and that, you know, you know, we Gabe would be over to trolling people in the I just, comments section. No, nah, I'm just gonna be listening. I'll just be listening. <laughs> I was good, right. Linnell. Oh, right, Linnell, Linnell, we got to come back, brother. We got to come back from brother I'll Linnell. Um, what should I do to go learn video? Evanston, you know, what? I don't really know how to do video editing. Um, I just purchased Adobe Premiere. Mm -hmm. I, what's those things that they have those courses? I mean, YouTube is good, but they what's gotta, the yeah. one that they have those? You, 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 you did me, you did me. That you did me has has some, but that's primarily like a freelance thing. So you know, uh, I typically use YouTube because it's free, and rather yeah. than paying for something that might or might not be good. So I got a Mac, so I typically just use like garage band for my video or the uh i movie for the joint. So i movie, yeah, yeah. I, I just bought you did me, yeah. I just bought uh, Adobe Premiere. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I get to the continent, I'll be um, messing with that a little bit, trying to get my skills well, up. But you, like but Techie but, said, he has some videos on it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, like D Dima uses, okay, for example, Dima uses Sony Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, mm, some people use Power Director. Yeah. Some people start off using Power Director, then they go to Sony Vegas, and then they go to Adobe mm -hmm. Premiere. I'm starting off specifically with Adobe Premiere, although my content doesn't really require a lot of video editing i don't hmm. have to do a whole lot but for, but like for example when i do my news shows if you guys see my dusty news network or my king guy in the news or let's say for example um because let me just say this before we go there's certain shows that i use that i when i create like for example when i create a show i produce a show hmm. there's certain shows that have to have very very good editing for example um, like my African news show that I do now, King on the News. That is a entertaining show about African politics and entertainment and stuff like that. That show has to be very tedious. Uh, if, if you ever seen my show, um, you she hit the wall but still entitled. That show takes it takes me like one like thirty minutes to record it, but it takes like all day for Demon to edit it. The Thirst Box is another. So there are some shows that take a lot of editing. You know, but for me, I mean, I probably could, you know, do my podcast green screen and do like a power director or whatever. And I, I will upload content. So if you're trying to, you know, depending on what you need to do, you know, if you're just doing basic news stuff or whatever, you don't need to have a whole lot. But depending if you want your production to be like really, 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 really good and really intricate, mm -hmm. you don't need to be good. Yeah. Because yeah. you got to, you know. So. Or you could use like a demon person yeah what, 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 what's going on lar hold on tap brother what's going on colleges me lar we got to get back on the brother pill so yeah i use again that's outsourcing let me tell you this i found dima on upwork.com um upwork.com i've been working with dima for three years four years um no matter if we made if he made a dollar or i didn't make a dollar i've been you know he works for me full time and again it goes back to the developing talent part 
Dima is a very talented editor. He's very good. He's created every situation like that I've done with like the thirst box or um, he's created the template for the news for Kinganda for the dusty news. That's his creation. He's done things that I could never think that I could do, but that's talent. Talent takes you a long place, long far. And so now when I want to install like a new segment, if I go to somebody new or different, we can just use his template and we can keep the show going and we can recreate it and, and, you know, do that template for production. So that's why it's important to get around people that got talent because, you know, they help your they can help your stuff go in the in directions that you could never do it by yourself. That's the whole thing about Todd Taylor Brothers. Develop people that are talented around you. Keep talented people because it helps you do things that normally that you could not do. Um, he designs all my thumbnails. You know what I mean? So uh, so shout out to Dima. But uh, what up, Uncle Nick? I know you guys had a podcast going. You super sly and. Uh, 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 the brother from uh, uh, you know, Mr. Patreon, man. I, I, I don't want to call his name out, but you know, you know, you know, Mr. Patreon was in the building. So, uh, any, anything you want to, uh, I don't want to call his real name, but anything else you want to say? Yeah, nothing else. I'm looking forward to the other, uh, to the other joint. <laughs> Truth teller 410. All right, so listen, guys, we're going right over there. Thank you, brothers, again. Um, you know. Shout out to uh, Big Bro College Genesis, uh, doing some great things uh, for the for the uh, for the continent. Um, no, what up, brother Q Butter? No, I don't. I, I I create the idea of the show, but how it looks, I don't create that. Like I, I create every show idea, but he creates the the templates. The um, for the most part, the how it looks. You know, the, I, I kind of give him an idea of what I'm trying to do. Shout out to Arhun Mohan. Also, I use him out of uh, India. He does my comics. He does some of the backgrounds. Um, he did the King Ghana background. So I have some teams, man, of people that that help me do things and achieve things that you don't even see. Shout out to Brother Black Rhino. Sorry, Mr. Stream Watcher. Play shout out to you, O'Shea. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, anything else you want to say, brother? Nope. Uh, nothing else. I just, uh, just, yeah. Just rewatch it if you haven't seen some of the tips and uh, try to apply as much as you can if you see fit. So, yeah. All right. All right. So, brother, we're going to go ahead on and go to the other show. Um, it will be some fuckery going on. Y'all know how I do it. Uh, come over to my O'Shea Vlogcast channel so you niggas can get roasted up. You know what time it is. Now we're going <laughs> to the nigga shit. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, family. We're going to holler. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Peace.